Good evening, everyone, and hello to those who are watching on the replay. Uh, my name is Donna Hook and my husband, Tim Hook. We are your co-hosts for this evening's Hook Up With Real Estate Masterclass. We are super excited to have our special guest, Barbara Heil Sonic. She was a co-author of the book, Real Women in Real Estate, Volume 1, and you'll find she has written several other books. Um, so... Uh, we will be talking about, I'll be introducing her and her accomplishments in just a few minutes, but we do have a few special uh, housekeeping items that we have to go through. So we'll get started. Hello, Margie. Thank you for joining. Hi there. I'll be right, hey. be right, I'll be right back. Sorry, I'm running a little late. <laughs> I'll be right back. No, no, no. We're just getting started. Okay. So... We do have two ways that you can stay connected with us. One is our YouTube channel, which is at Hook Up With Real Estate, all one word. And we'd love for you to subscribe there. And if you want to stay connected, you know, as a community in between the master classes, we also have a Facebook groups page at Hook Up With, or forward slash Hook Up With Real Estate. So we encourage you to join both. Um, want to share our mission which is to provide aspiring and early real estate investors with exceptional education, skills training, and opportunities to invest in profitable real estate while simultaneously sharing ways to avoid costly mistakes like the one Ken and I made early in our real estate journey. And so <clears throat> you can read about those woes <laughs> Our, our uh, journey in the book, Real Women in Real Estate, Volume 1, which you can get for $2.99 on Amazon, or I'm happy to send you a signed copy for $17. Uh, my husband is also a New Jersey realtor, so um, feel free to reach out to him if you're in the northern New Jersey area. And um, just uh, we have 12 opportunities this year for you to learn from the hookup with real estate master class and here's the calendar if you just want to do a quick screenshot we generally meet on the fourth wednesday of every month except uh, this uh, november and december so we want to avoid the holiday con conflict so we're meeting on the third wednesday then and we are powered by Legends Equity Group, so you can continue your education on Mondays at 7 p.m. They have a rookie round table, which is uh, Eastern time, and there's a, always more great information there. And this is the founder of Legends, and there I am. Okay, Ken, would you quickly read the disclaimer? Yeah, <clears throat> yes, hold on one second. Let me minimize that. We appreciate you attending the Hookup with Real Estate Masterclass presented by co-host Kenneth and Donna Hook. The content we provide is strictly for education, educational purposes and not intended as legal, financial, or investment advice. Remember, participation in this program is at your own discretion. Real estate markets are subject, subject to change and can be dynamic. Neither hook up with real estate nor its representatives will be liable for any outcomes resulting from the information provided. Seek professional advice before making any real estate or investment decisions. By attending, you can send to this event being recorded and understand that internet security is not absolute. Okay, and lastly, would you mind reading the quote of the day? Opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming. Richard Branson. All right. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce our very special guest, Barbara Heil Sonic. And Barbara's successful 20 year career in the real estate industry is built on her diverse and rich experiences. She worked internationally in Fortune 500 organizations for small companies and as a serial entrepreneur. She's also a savvy real estate investor and award-winning designer with a passion for travel. Her vision is to help successful, creative professionals 
leverage their experience and success by harnessing the power of investments and partnerships to create their rich life. In 2022, Barbara successfully transitioned her luxury design staging team to run company operations, allowing her to step into a shareholder role at Design to Sell. This move allowed Barbara to dive back into the real estate investing game. She believes in the lessons taught in the books, Atomic Habits and the Power of One More, and that aligning with the right partners, assembling the right teams, and honoring core values are keys to success. A trailblazer in many ways, Barbara is not afraid to be uncomfortable, believing that with discomfort comes growth. As a business owner and real estate investor, she focuses on heart-centered leadership with authentic authenticity, energy alignment, and business growth strategies. Barbara's deeply enthusiastic about legacy building and social impact. Her calling is collaborating for solutions and raising awareness against human trafficking. Lastly, Barbara is a co-author of five books, including Powerful Female Immigrants and Real Women in Real Estate, Volumes 1 and 2. Her motto, be fearless, inspired, unstoppable for change. And you can connect with Barbara on Linktree, https colon forward slash forward slash link, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Barbara H.S. So I'm going to stop sharing now and introduce our lovely guest. All right. Welcome, Barbara. So I am tell very us. excited. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for the, you know, very warm introduction. And, you know, it's like all of these accolades, right, when you're listening to it, say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Was that me? <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Yeah, so tell us, how did you first get into real estate? That is a, a real funny story. It uh, happened by accident, really, honestly. I was always entrepreneurial in my, uh, in my corporate life and had side businesses. But real estate come, came to me by a friend asking me, hey, there is a real estate investing class this weekend. Would you like to come with me? I have a second ticket. And uh, so it's 50% off if you want to come with me. And I said, yes. And the rest is history. Hmm. So what were they teaching at that real estate class? Well, it was the typical, um, you know, single family, you know, buy, rehab uh, or buy and flip. And, you know, the whole conversation around, you know, creating your LLCs, you know, doing, um, you know, protection elements. And I can tell you, we pretty much did everything wrong uh, on the first house. Uh, so there were a lot of mistakes. And I think that is the main part. That was in 2007. And at that point in time, the majority of investors really had been uh, males. You couldn't really find a lot of uh, female in that in that field who were teaching and uh, providing education. Anyhow, um, you know, we were taught the right things, but then reality hits. So we had, you know, we bought that first house and we hired a contractor and it, you know, we, we did not do the right vetting process. So um, you know, after pretty much a half job done, uh, on the next morning, we got the call that he is in jail. And he asked, okay, do you want to bail me out? I said, I'm not bailing you out. Bailing you out. Uh, so, but we had to figure out what we did. So I, um, you know, luckily I'm also pretty handy. So I really pulled up my sleeve. And, you know, we're starting, you know, to do some sheet rocking and sheet rocking, if you know what that means. Uh, but we had some plumbers coming because there was a kitchen installation, was nothing big. 
But uh, I think at that point in time, I was also just starting to date my husband, my husband then, and uh, he picked me up and I was sanding, right? I was definitely using too much mud and I was sanding that all down and the dust was everywhere, right? In your nostrils, everywhere. <laughs> so you look like a snowman. So I said, okay, if he, you know, wants to go out with me after he sees me like that, then I think that's a good sign, right? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> So it was the strategy of fix and flip for your first yeah. woman? Well, that was exactly what we were trying to do on the first part, to have some cash so we could invest and utilize that as a down payment for the next property and a hold. So it was a lot of labor of love, a lot of learning with that first one. We still, um, you know, made some profit, not as much as we were hoping for with all of the delays. It came out to around 20,000, 25,000 in that, you know, part. But we also put the labor in. So we did not pay us from the labor, right? But at the end, you know, the, the, the net came out to, you know, to this amount. And from there, you know, we built more relationship with with trusted uh, uh, trusted contractors, and things got uh, got easier. So was the combination, and uh, I did that for roughly five years. Uh, uh, so that. how did you actually find the first house? You know, like uh... really the typical FMLS looking and uh, looking also at wholesalers. So there's you know you know by ugly houses, you know by this the, this ugly house guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, we built some relationships with them. And that's how we got our first, I think, five houses. So pretty much through that relationship. And um, yeah, and uh, and yeah, it worked step by step. Uh, however, after a certain point, since we also did the flips, I started to, you know, do the light decoration, picked up all of the interiors. And uh, found some love in uh, and some success in what we did at the lower part. And with that, Design to Sell was actually born. So it was a result out of the real estate investing. Okay, so Design to Sell is your staging company. Exactly. Which, and I think you have some statistics that you can share about staging, right? That yeah. It's a staged house. Yeah, it's more. and it's, it's still, it is all, you know, staging is the only tool you have in hand to increase the perceived value of a property, right? Everything is perceived. Everything has a value, which at the end, we know uh, the price is made up, right? The price is made up based on what somebody is willing to pay for it. And it depends a lot on the market and the market uh, situation. And we have just, you know, a first time, you know, first time to really make the first impression. It's a similar when you're meeting somebody. You have this couple of seconds and you form an opinion and you determine if you like or dislike, you know, what, what you see. No matter what it is with every decision we're making on purchases, it is emotional. We we quant we qualify it with uh, with the numbers after the fact, you know, to confirm that what we're doing is the right thing to do. But at the end, every pretty much every decision is at the end emotional. Right. Well, they so say buy, on, on, the buy on emotion and justify what logic and reason. Yeah. So that's the part. So it comes down to really our statistics over the year shows it is reducing time on market staged versus unstaged by 50%. And uh, it is increasing perceived value. And there's different examples. So we are pulling our own statistics together. And it is can be between one and 10%. But it depends. I think the biggest uh, in that, but it, it's not a true oh. Uh, it's, it is a success story, but it's not a true success story because, again, we're talking about uh, uh, emotions. We started with the fix and flips, but uh, our the company has uh, has enhanced and is now mainly focusing on the luxury market. So last year we had the opportunity to stage Elton John's property 
and uh, you know this property went 40 percent above list price so there was wow. a bidding war for that property however staging is one element and one tool but it comes down that somebody also wanted to put their name behind the celebrity and saying i own elton john's property however luckily out of that we actually also then you know staged the, the house of the uh the team staged the house of the the buyer so you know there's always multiple parts and in the meantime we, our team, have met several friends and friends of friends of Elton's because it's a tight niche and network, and that helps a lot with building relationships. Sure. So you you go from staging uh, your fix and flips, and I met into staging luxury market houses or condos and Airbnbs. So how do you grow this business? From yeah, the beginning. But again, to... talking like like with every business, it is all about the numbers. This is a very logistic driven business, and it has to be. It's very defined because you pretty much have to evaluate what the total package price is, and um, you know, and there are, you know there might be you know you have to to deal with everything in between. So, um, you know, you have uh, there's monthly renewals, you have the typical rental concept around it. But uh, at the end, it is, you know, you have to create something on the fly. Installations are done in four to six hours. And it's a machinery. You can think about an assembly. Inventory, a warehouse is a turn of inventory place. 80% of inventory is out, 20% is in the warehouse, and uh, inventory comes in and out with the trucks, and the design team has to utilize the inventory. So if you think about it from an, I don't want to go into, into the depths, but it is running as a well-oiled machinery. It's not like, you know, uh, it's, it's very defined. So you have to really understand inventory, you have to understand your numbers, you have to understand design trips, uh, trends, and you have to understand how to make quickly decisions and how to make things really look amazing. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess you very, also need... You, yeah, and, and we're talking about an inventory of 2.5 or 3 million, roughly, wow. which is turning uh, at speed. And you have to purchase a collection, and the collection has to always stay on trend. So there's a lot of elements, you know, you don't see, but you see the final product, but it's really understanding the impact and it runs. It comes down to really understand how to run it efficiently and how to purchase efficiently too. At the end, we also want to sell out of installation. So there is, you know, a two, uh, it's a two-pronged approach. We want somebody also to have the opportunity to purchase. But down, it comes down to really buying a business and running a business, which is the same with real estate and it's the same with investing, right? That's the part is I always invested, I always purchased houses. And, uh, you know, now since a couple of years, uh, yeah, we moved to And this is, you know, again, you have to know your numbers. It comes down to understanding, knowing the numbers and know how to run business and know how to build team, which is a key element because it's about the game with the players to make it right and have it smooth and the oil machinery with all of the processes supporting growth. Well, let's talk about team selection, if you will. Uh, you know, we've made our share of mistakes with our partners. So let's hear, you know, what you do to select partners, if you've ever made any mistakes so oh, of course, of everybody makes mistakes. I think that it would be, you know, I think life is learning. And uh, I call mistakes often stepping stones to the next part, you know, to the next level. There's always something not going the perfect way. However, what I learned over the years is that it is so important to make also sometimes quicker decisions and hire the right people. I think the biggest part is 
people buy into vision, it's not only a job. I I try to, and it's you know it's hard because I have also I deal with a lot of logistic and blue you know blue uh, color in, in environment as well. But at the end, it is about the working environment you're establishing, and people also want to see a vision which might be bigger than only the job somebody is performing. Uh, interestingly, since I stepped out again, uh, and, and I mentioned my background comes from corporate, what I did in corporate world was setting up new organizations, first at a local level, then at a European level, and then later at a global level, and also building team. At a certain point, I had over 300 um, people in their teams. They had their team leaders start reporting up. Uh, to that uh, big project. So a lot of this skill set, I feel and believe is transferable. With hiring the right people is really understanding what their goals are and where they want to go and what their vision is. And I believe there's also sometimes a life cycle behind people. I shared uh, prior before everybody came on that my operations director who was with me the last six, seven years, just uh, pre-retired today. And uh, things like that, of course, have a major impact of the, in, in, in the operation. But interestingly, from the point she told me to hiring the new person, it was a week. And it's, I was not even advertising, um, you know, on, on some of the tools. I was just utilizing the network of the people I know and, um, and things really fell into place. It's not always the case, but right? that is not always the case. But I believe you have to consistently hire and be on the lookout for talent versus just having conversations when you need somebody because then you have less opportunity to choose from the right person. Uh, and I try to implement that strategy uh, very, um, I'm, I'm very, very good with implementing this strategy and then also hiring and test driving people. But what's the worst thing is happening? The worst thing is happening if you if you believe there is an opportunity for growth, and of course you have to understand the mechanics of your business. But if I know with the right person I can push to the next level, uh, I might have a time frame of three to six months to make that work, right? So that's a risk mm. I'm willing to take uh, for you know for the gain I'm coming and also the freedom. Uh, to uh, you know, to to separate me then again from uh, from any any additional tax, if that makes sense. So now people really they they not they're not only working and hiring for this staging company. They buy into the vision and the mission I have, and you know we, you shared a couple of them. And, you know, this is the book writing, it is speaking on stages. I think in two weeks, I have the opportunity to be on the same stage Tim Story is uh, is talking, which is a fantastic opportunity. And I was speaking at another stage with some, um, you know, with some government uh, officials in the Atlanta market. So some is global, some is local, some is nationwide. But it's, you know, when people see that you are out there and you're striving for more, I feel it is like an energy bubble and it is attraction, right? There's an element of attraction. With that, you're also attracting a different mindset. And this is 25 years of hard work, right? It's not sure. happening overnight. This has been built over time, um, you know, up nice and I'm still don't know what I want to be when I grow up so it's <laughs> it is developing but you are now back into the real estate game as a GP and an 
LP, I believe. Um, yeah. So what about the partnerships there? Now, are the, are you still partnering with the same person you were doing fix and flips with? Or No, no, that things has changed. And the one part is that when you step out of one industry who thinks a certain way, I don't think you can, you're expecting that everybody grows at the same growth mindset uh, out of that. So I believe strongly I had to completely get out of my comfort zone, out of everything I knew to put myself out there into new rooms where I was the little fish, right? You know, in, at a certain point, you make a name, you're known, it's comfortable, um, you know, you win your awards, you know, seven years in a row, do this. It's nice, comfortable, but there is no growth, right? You hit the ceiling, you hit the ceiling. And uh, the only way you can grow is jumping. When I came to the U.S., I had a week to make a decision to leave my country, everything behind, jump on the airplane and take a new position. Wow. So uh, that tells you a little bit that I am a risk taker, but I call it calculated risk. So I have some crazy things, you know, with, you know, jumping in the water with the sharks, but it's calculated risk. What I mean with that, they were all fed. And, you know, a lot of other people, you know how to behave as scuba dive, right? So, you know, you're not putting your hand in a hole, right? So you're not doing anything which is, you know, you're not supposed to do, but there is, I call it calculated risk. Mm. So how did you select your partners then for your current GP? After going into oh. the new rooms, I started, you know, to listen. And then I think it comes also what is speaking to you. There are people that have amazing knowledge, but they have a certain style that might be very loud. Some are more uh, structured and more number driven. I think number one is everybody of us is a different learner. And we're also motivated by different things. Uh, a good example for me is when you read a book, right? You read a book. I love, um, uh, you know, I love to read books. So at my left, um, you know, yeah, Power of One More, uh, only as an example. Uh, I, I started to go out and went to a couple of the 10x events. And they were very inspiring and hyped up. And it um, was great messages. There's tons of knowledge there. However, you have to be ready to digest. Your mind has to be ready to, what does that mean, this 10x, right? 10x. And uh, it resonated with me after I was reading at my lab, The Power of One More, because everybody can do one more call, one more step, one more something. All of that, but at the end, translates into a 10x. But that approach and that mindset was something, you know, my brain could better comprehend. And that was my next step, right? Okay. And this, you know, it's harder to, you know, go to 2x than to 10x, right? But it, it, but you have to get there first, right? Right. And you have you to have walk to before you be can run. Exactly. So you have to be in the rooms where you know you find your community. It wouldn't help me unless you have a good amount of, uh, money power you wanted to invest and you are already in a uh, KP, you know, uh, position key, or, you know, we're I'm not sure. Key in, principle. Key principle position. Uh, and, you know, so therefore you, you have the control element there. Uh, that's different. Then you want to be in these rooms when we're talking about A plus and, you know, how many million, 40, 80, 120 million uh, uh, you know, investments. Uh, however, not everybody is at that at that space. So I had to go out and find where I feel I fit in. And yes, you know, the legends was one part. So I was looking at that. There's a couple of other elements. There's, you know, we were out with, you know, with, with Massive, with Jamrock. You know, there's a lot of different educators and trying to um, find who are the next and coming. So for me, I knew, um, you know, I cannot immediately reach to that top level. So what's the next and coming level and who out of this next and coming level are the people I can align best with? 
and I see opportunity because I can provide value and they see value in me, right? It's both part. It's that part of giving and being of service, trying to find where your uh, space is. So it took me three years, two and a half to three years now to identify several syndications and people I would feel very comfortable to do business with. And unfortunately, I believe there is no shortcut. That is the hard work everybody has to put in. And some of that, it is also timing, right? It has to be the right timing. You might find the right partner, but the partner they are involved in other deals and might not be available at that given time. So this hard work has to be brought in and we have to work on it daily. <laughs> All right. So you found some partners that you felt you could align with. And in terms of, aside from staging, what value are you bringing to the uh, to the general partnerships? Is it finances? Is it uh, asset management, finding deals? Everybody has their part. I believe the two areas I am good at is team building, which is an element also of asset management and the communication with the teams as an interlock. And the other part is on the capital raising side, building relationships, which is my goal. So having, building that relationship with potential investors in the future. So that is, cause it's not happening overnight. Trust is not happening overnight. It takes me a good amount of time to watch people before I am jumping unless their track record is proven, right? But it's different yeah. when you start, there is not that proven track record. And the people who have that and have done it successfully, um, there's not always a place on their team. So uh, depends on you know what is also your risk factor and there are different concepts out there of what we want to do. But I believe in learning and having even for um, for less profit share the right partners there to reduce the risk of failure. So that's overall the strategy. Me personally, uh, the mission vision alignment is key. My tagline is connect with people who raise your vibration. We can find amazing people. There are people out there that have tons of knowledge. When you have a conversation with somebody, there has to be something. There has to be a likability factor and you have to, there's an element of comfort and or push. It doesn't matter. But something has to align and feel I can see that that is inspiring or that is a good opposite to uh, to what is needed in the package. I see it as an energy bubble. I like to always talk about vibration and listen to what our inner body and our, you know, uh, what our belly is telling us, <laughs> that gut feel element. I am a strong believer uh, in that as well. Doesn't mean that it, it you are not proven wrong now and then, but it gives me a much higher chance of being successful versus just jumping because something is glittery and or it looks good. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about the energy vibration. Like what kind of signals do you get? Um, you know, when when you're vibrationally a match or not? <laughs> Well, I think it is that sometimes it's that feeling that you enjoy the time together. I think we 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 it is much easier to do this with people to business with people we like and respect versus the opposite. So I think this is the very simple part, and I believe sometimes when we're children, uh, our antennas are much you know they are better built in really clearly identifying what we like and what we say yes or no to, right? And we make it very clearly. We voice it very clearly too, <laughs> for other reasons as well, right? Because we want yeah. something. However, 
um, I believe that sometimes in the years we are kind of like, you know, not training this instinct element in us as much. And I feel I'm, I really work on training that instinct element. That is also meaning our surrounding, right? It's the same when you're entering, you're going somewhere and you don't feel comfortable. There's something off. So, and it's the same part with there's something good. So let's, you know, let it happen. When I network, I never have the goal to meet everybody in the room. I have the goal yeah. to meet two or three people and have a good conversation. And it's either flowing and or it is not. And then it's not the right part for me and that's okay. It's for somebody else. Yeah, well, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the, the projects, the real estate projects you're working on now. Uh, what yeah, are absolutely thinking? excited. So we just, I was just, uh, we were just closing a deal, deal in Texas, but now mm -hmm. we're kind of like underwriting. Uh, and I was only a very small part of uh, of that one. Uh, but it's always exciting to see something moving, you know, moving to the to the closing line. So that was in Arlington. So that was fantastic. Right is now, it multifamily or um, multifamily? Multifamily. Okay, multifamily. All of that is multifamily. So over the uh, last three and a half years, I have invested uh, with different syndicators in different partnerships, mainly in C and B uh, class multifamily uh, uh, areas. I am very strong. I like a, a little bit that if there's an opportunity, if there is that element of like little townhouse, so it's more like a living quarter where somebody else, you know, could really where you have a little you know a little backyard or at least have a balcony so that you know I like it if it is available uh, so that is one part but I also have invested in a new development which is a new land development and that oh. is on the south side of Atlanta it is uh, farm to table driven it is a net zero built it has all of the elements and you know everybody can hear my beautiful accent accent so everybody knows i'm a very southern belle right <laughs> southern belle. Uh, so coming from germany and so there is elements of that net zero and sustainability and environment i enjoy so that was drawn me to this investment also i wanted to learn what that all means so on that investment they have single family houses they are going up to a million as when they are selling it but they also have a retail space and also restaurant and a cooking school because the investors coming out of the restaurant business they trained um they trained uh their chefs how to run the business again comes the business element and they bought the buildings where the restaurants were in and the well, here's the opportunity to be part of it, right? So love the whole concept. And if that is successful, they will even have a truffle farm. And if oh. that is successful, they're trying to place it into other areas in the US. So it's exciting. It's something a little bit different. And so that was excited. I said, okay, I can learn. I love the build. I knew that team for several years. And so I felt uh, that is a good, it's a good opportunity. Yeah, here's a little fun fact. Ken used to be a chef, so he okay. went to, <laughs> to yeah. school. So I'm a little spoiled that way. I don't cook too much. <laughs> the good but, food at home. Yes, good food at home. So um, so how are you finding balancing? You know, I, I guess you have operations who's now running your, your staging business, and so you're able to step out more, but... I'm sure it does require some of your time. So how did you grow yeah, that and transform yeah. into being able to step out? If you when will. you make that decision that there is another goal you want to accomplish, you make things happen. I uh, went, you know, for years I went to evening school for, you know, in addition, I think whenever we have a goal and we're driven by it, we will make room for it, right? Because there is a decision-making process and uh, it's just how you plan your day. 
And my goal is when I do something multiple times, I try to I try to immediately figure out how I can delegate it off my plate because I don't want to do repetitive items. I want to focus on that creative side in where things can grow. That's where I want to spend time and I love to play you know, in that field. However, we know whenever we start something, you have to be hands-on involved until it is running because uh, you want to test drive it as well. So it's, you know, it's, it's both, but that helped. And that delegation is key um, in hiring people. So I have man managed and, you know, my team now, we are a total of 15 people. And uh, some of them are also virtual assistant. I try also to run the operations as virtual as we can with only um, people in the office who really have to be in the office, which was example, we moved warehouses. Old warehouse had a large office space that was before COVID. Then, you know, it was completely empty because I was, you know, and I said, okay, I don't need all of the representative spaces and, you know, we don't have meetings there. So new warehouse has hardly any office space, just, you know, work a little, you know, meeting area and one office for the operations director. And that is pretty much it. And everything else is moved. So I can go on my computer and I can see what is going on. Right, hmm. because all the processes are set up, the way updates are given. So I know, oh, we arrived at the project, that is happening, that is happening. So you're always, you know, updated if you wanted to. It's not that, yeah. you know, that's not my job anymore. That's the job of, uh, uh, you know, the team to run it. But you're setting your KPIs, you know, key performance indicators and the metrics in place to make that work. Nice. So how, how big is the team now? Yeah, well, we are 15. And then oh. we are hiring external, um, you know, for different overflow. But 15 are pretty much running, uh, you know, with and a lot of them are also part timers, because that helps, you know, if you understand the, that part of the operation, it works, you know, it works pretty well. And then mm -hmm. we have our virtual assistants and our, you know, our back office. Uh, support but a lot is you know our HR is our payroll is outsourced accounting is outsourced everything I can outsource a uh, third party is pretty much outsourced and then every two or three years we are reevaluating if we see if we can you know optimize things and um, you know squeeze it uh, to make it more profitable nice so let's go back and talk a little bit about capital raising. So, uh, you know, it's, it's something I've done, but not a lot of. And, you know, as new investors, let us know your thoughts on capital raising for beginners and, you know, more advanced skills. It's a sale because that is really what it is. And or for me, I like to utilize the word relationship building is uh, it's a key element on the capital raising. Nobody like to be pitched at. Yeah. So the, for me, the key is understanding and talking about pain points. What are the pain points? So my ideal uh, uh, avatar is creative entrepreneurs. I come out of the entrepreneur space. I know what it means. I, I work the long hours. There are certain things I absolutely can relate, but I also know how to get out of it. Um, that is also, you know, creating your rich life, which means different things for different people. So mm -hmm. understanding pain points, uh, you know, who is it? And the other part is, does your ideal client avatar have the capacity and the cash available to invest because mm -hmm. they might be willing and understand but they might not be able to invest 50 75 or 100 thousand so there has to be an element of income level and as you have conversation i think we can't be afraid to ask straight forward 
questions. Um, and of course, we can package them nicely, but uh, we want to know what the situation is because you don't want to also, you know, if somebody's interested and they want to learn about it, that is fantastic. But, you know, you don't want to call the same person over and over again with, you know, with minimal results. So it's like, Similar in business when you're running. So who are your A, B, or C clients? So where is the highest potential for conversion? And most of the time, the person who's just starting to learn about it might not immediately jump on an investment on the first deal presented to them because they don't have enough knowledge yet to make that informed. I think it becomes a little bit easier if you have a larger organization in the background, means somebody who has done it already and has a proven track record. So that because it's about trust and making somebody feel comfortable, even so we're interested. And there are people, even at the higher bracket, they will not take the risk, even for two, three, or four percent more. They might not want to take the risk to take it out because if they have, um, you know, if they have a family, you know, if, they, if, if this is family heritage, they don't want to be the one losing the money, right? So there's a lot of responsibility too. And they rather have it, you know, have it sitting and only growing small, uh, but they don't want to have the risk of, I know it's kind of, a, it's interesting, but, you know, you have to really understand and learn where the other person is and what's yeah. the risk factor also they are willing to take. Right. And that's and conversation. Goals right? are it's, little, it's little conversations. And, you know, this is making all of the notes and, you know, we learn more and more as we come down. But also we have to, you know, set a parameter of time around it because otherwise it's, you know, and, and, and you know, it's pretty much, so what's the next step at the next part? You want to learn what, you know, what's the next willing step there? What is, you know, what's holding somebody back? back? And it's not always what they say. So you have to find little questions, you know, around that. And, you know, you know, look at the, look at it from all different perspectives. Yeah. Now you run a meetup in Atlanta, right? That is correct. Yeah. With Andrea. And, so do you find some of your potential investors through the meetup or? Some of them have been and others uh, come from relationships and contacts over the last 25 years because they worked in corporate and or started their own businesses. So it's part of this part of this conversation. And I am not, um, this is the area I want to grow in but I am not 100% there yet. It is, yeah. you know, it is coming, but that's the area because I believe it takes six to 18 months to really master that and create your, and as always people you have, you are adding to uh, to the database. Right, yeah, it's absolutely relationship building and problem solving for them and understanding their goals. And yes. It is a learning, definitely a learning experience. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about capital raising? I think it is an education if you and everybody on, on the team in general is involved in capital raising because it's such a important element of a typical syndication unless it is a fund you know it's a different so you know there are different elements in how um, syndications can work but in the standard syndication an element of capital raising is part of it yeah so now, is your projects sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt are they more 506 b where you can have a credit both. dynamic okay it's so b for both, both. It's both, yeah. and sometimes it's changing, really depending on the strategy, right? And how many spots are available, and you know, still following the SEC, you know, SEC rules guidelines. Nice. Yeah. So then, let's just talk about a little bit about asset management. Um, 
I know you said you're doing team building and communication. So are you working with property managers to build the team or what, what kind of team building are you doing there? Yes. And again, uh, of course, depends on the size, but the maturity of investments I have been involved in uh, has the size for uh, allowing for property management in place. And there are different, um, different types. So I think if you are in the syndication space, um, uh, you know, the, we have the investors, but if you're in the syndication space, the connection with the brokers is the key to maintain that constantly for deal flow. And then the other part is uh, property management and understanding who is really good. And uh, the brokers can be a fantastic resource to share who could be an amazing property management company for mm. that type of asset. And so that is something um, I actually, you know, somebody recently shared that with me. So I want to share that as a nugget as well, because it makes so much sense, right? Because they already know everybody. It's also the case that most of the property management companies, they know each other too. And so it's also important, you know, have they managed the asset before, um, what insights could they share? And depending on the size of the property and the location, you know, there are certain property management companies more, um, you know, more, you know, better, better fit than the other. So we have one deal we're working on, which is a real huge one. And so this is uh, the property management company we're talking there is a larger one. And they are not only in Georgia, they're also, you know, in the whole, um, you know, Northeast. Um, so wow. they are kind of like broader. But the nice thing there too is you're building relationships. And the other is like, you know, smaller deal and it is more local. So they're focusing more on that local market and uh, it's a different, it's a different setup. And it's a hard business. Property management is a hard business also with a low margin so they have to function and run very 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 smooth yeah i know in our single family they get 10 percent yeah and we're talking about 2.5 or 3 percent by a large asset and of course the numbers change depending on the size of the on the size of the asset uh, yeah. over so you talk a lot about, um, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. So why don't you share a little bit about that and yeah, how that yeah, helped you in happy, real estate? Happy, happy to do. Well, I number one, in the past, I always set one goal every year. I said, I want to do one new thing. And that's like a bigger thing or something or learn something I never have done prior and some of the things I might only learn and have done it, and then it was it. And others uh, I took with me uh, because I really truly love and and enjoy it. You know, scuba diving was one. Writing the book, I didn't know that. You know, I will be it will be four books when I said, okay, now you know the first book was two thousand seven. It's time now. Last year, you know, to write another, and so then four collaborations later. Right here we are. Amazing. Um, so that that was one part. Uh, one year I took singing. Yeah. And this is the book. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. can see it. Yeah, Revive real... Professional Women. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Women Immigrants. And I love that. And I can just encourage if it, you like or think about writing that book, just writing down this story. It was very freeing for me, but it also allowed myself to connect and communicate with others at a different level. And just a little side story, coming from corporate and being in corporate, I always felt strongly that I would not, you know, I shouldn't show my feelings. I have to be strong. I have to be like a man, you know, can't, you know, can't, show. and, and, sorry, my lingo is shit. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's really, we have to, you know, we have to be who we are. And just allowing myself to be free. And I shared that story prior. Like today, I was shedding a lot of tears, you know, having my operation man, who's also a very dear friend for years, you know, we raised our kids, uh, our, our kids Aww. together. So it's a long time. So, of course. Uh, and that happens also if I have to let go somebody. 
sometimes you let go of somebody because it's not the right fit and mm -hmm. uh, it's important. And I might be sad and I might even shed tears because I'm sorry because you as a person, I like you, but you as a person working in my company is not a fit. I have to make mm -hmm. the decision which is right for the rest of the team. And yeah, just yeah. thinking about things differently makes such a difference. So for me now, Fadis, I can be, I am strong. Trust me, I am, I am strong, but I'm also weak. And mm. I am, I can cry and I am emotional. And that is all part of me. And just embracing that and doing that. So the book really and writing down the story has helped me tremendously just to be also in sync with who I am. And that is that was so freeing. It was so freeing. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I felt quite similar, you know, just to be able to get that story out. Yeah. It's like, all right, I can put it behind me now. Let's yes. move on. Yeah. So what exciting, uncomfortable thing are you doing? Well, I know you just finished uh, volume two. Is there another goal you have for this year? <laughs> Well, you know, last year, um, one new thing was the being asked to be on the board of advisors for a technology company. And this relationship also goes back for 20 years uh, in my, you know, IBM, you know, times. And I was not even thinking. It was just because I am in a certain space and I like to connect. Uh, businesses and see value. I, I think I have a, I can conceptually grasp a lot of things and see opportunities. And when I see opportunities, I'm a connector. And uh, that really brought me and I have, so I connected that company with a couple of uh, leads and other businesses and um, they enjoyed it as much and said, hey, you really understand. And, you know, we were, and so we talked about the product set and the, the and what they're rolling out. And so it was a fantastic opportunity. And then they asked me to be on the board and also consult with them for, um, for the opportunity to do that, but also share in company. And so I was very humbled. Originally, I didn't really want to do it because I had all of the other elements, but we agreed this is only um, a certain amount of hours, but it's also a fantastic opportunity for learning because uh, they are very highly advanced on the SAAS side and technology. Software and as a service, work, yeah. Yeah, and work a lot, um, you know, on, on development of applications. So one little side product actually out of that was last year, I started developing uh, a crawler, a web crawler application for our business, which okay. we can utilize to find our leads. And so that was, you know, something coming out of all of this new connections and relationships. So for this year, I have set the bar high because I just turned 60. So for this year, it's 60 new experiences for this Ooh. year. But, <laughs> but this does not have to be, you know, the last things when I did something that took quite some time. Uh, learning something new just a couple of months, learning singing is not something, it's like what well, a six month process, right? To take lessons and then uh, performing at a certain time. Uh, but it is putting you outside of the comfort zone and always being a humble learner. I feel whenever we step out of this comfort zone and be a humble learner, we always put us our in the shoes of a beginner. And uh, that is, you know, keeping us humble because I don't have any clue on how to do certain things. And I feel that is an important part too. Yeah. So 60 yeah, things I... this year. And, you know, and if anybody has any fun ideas, I have experienced something which has been a little bit unique. Please share it with me. I would love it. I still work on my 60 items. They are not all set in stone. Some are surprises people are doing for me and others is I intentionally plan for it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, let me just think. 
So uncomfortable 60 things this year. That's a great goal. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about, you know, a little bit more about um, how you take heart centered leadership and do that in your business and your real estate. Yeah. I think it comes back to the connection and the people you're aligning with even on the investment side and where we are, I feel specifically also in the C-class environment, we are providing housing for people who wanna have safe housing, housing no matter what. So as we create safe environments, you know, I feel no matter where we are, I as a woman or other women should feel comfortable and feel safe to be, no matter at what price point that property is. So the safety element around it, I feel is key after that comes also for the children and an uh, element of clean, right? So as we have investor conversations and as we align, I wanna make that part of my communication. Of course, that has to be aligned with the partners and the people you're working with. And I want us to do little things for the community, driving community impact, aligning, you know, with the government there. There's, you know, a lot. And we have amazing women as part of our rebuyer and other book launches. They have fantastic ideas and opportunities for us to collaborate. There are government grants, there's opportunity, you can get elements of reduction um, if you have like, you know, a certain size of property, but you can have maybe some child care involved in just think outside of the box and see what we can do to drive some changes, even if a little portion of the profit goes for a good cause. It's driven by the people who are running it, uh, but I think if we at least think about it, and it's part of one of our vision mission statements and how we're working together and what we want to do, then um, it is driving change. And so I think, you know, as I communicate and work with businesses, I can tell you all of them are vision mission driven. So for them, their purpose comes first and money comes second. And they are, you know, they are not driven purely by uh, the money. They're driven by the purpose of what they're trying to do and how they're changing the world and money follows. If mm. that means that like the one company, they were sending a lot of investor money back because strategically that new investor was not aligning with the vision of where they want to drive the product. So you have, sometimes you have to make hard decisions, right? If it's not the right fit, and again, that comes to capital raising as well, which counts for everything. It is okay to say no if it's not the right fit because yeah. it's you know, causing a lot of trouble after the fact, right? If somebody says, no, I, this is too risky and I said, well, oh, but I know I want to invest because I say, okay, then, you know, we close it, it's fine. You know, we, oh, now, I say, why do you want it now? So what changed your mind? We have to be also, you know, we have to put it up there and determine what is happening. Because at the end, you want the people who are also aligning. They understand the risk. They understand what it is. We cannot, you know, we have projections out there. But there's a risk element. The same when you're investing in stock, right? There's a risk element. And uh, uh, this is not the syndicator. The syndicator has to share all of the, uh, the risk elements there. The investor has to understand the risk element. Well, and, sure, and especially with the changing the economy right now and the higher yeah. interest rates. What kind Nobody of... has the, you know, has the magic glass and can project the future, but we can, we know the history, but we cannot truly project, right? We can assume, as everybody else assumes, based on historic data and needs and what is happening in the pipeline, but, you know, things can change. Like COVID definitely taught us that things can change in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. So when your team is doing underwriting, um, you know, what do you look for in a in an underwriting? You look for conservative underwriting or value add. Um, 
tell us well, a little it's, bit. You know, conservative underwriting for me became I'm I'm very conservative. If you if I would define who I am, I am conservative, but I'm also a risk taker. But it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, risk taking means it's the same when you're choosing your CPA, right? You want to have somebody who's really conservative, but 100% understands all of the rules, because only if they understand all of the rules, they can tell you all the things you can do, right? So, That's you know, true. It, it, so for that part, yes, I think I'm a conservative risk taker in, uh, in that part. I want to understand, you know, what are the different, what's my A scenario, B scenario, and C scenario in this uh, in this environment. And there are so much more to learn, right? Every project means new learnings. There's something we learn we might not know before. Um, that that is a that is a constant constant part. Yes, at the end we're looking at the underwriting from the investor perspective. Maybe a different angle on that. Instead of just looking at the deal I might also look, okay, who are my investors there? What are they looking for? Does, mm. you know, where do I have the highest chance to get them, you know, on board with them? So what projects do I say yes or no to? Mm. Interesting. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, one of my lights now kind of like went out. I think, yeah, you know, it's it battery, it's battery powered. So I'm a little bit darker. I hope it's still okay. But yeah, it's, it's still okay. Um, underwriting. So we we covered a lot. Um, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? Yeah, or maybe if somebody has questions. Then yeah, you know, let's see who has yeah. questions. Um, Ken, Margie, Felix, Jason. Oh, Margie's hand is raised. Okay, Margie. Hey, good evening. Welcome. Yeah, it's fantastic. Hi, Margie. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Donna, and um, others here on the call. I'm happy to see my friend Joan. I invited Joan to to our group tonight. She's here with me in the Hilton Head, um, South Carolina area. So um, anyway, Thank my you. question, pardon me? Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank Part, my question is, um, I'm fairly new um, to multifamily, and I'm not sure if others on the call are as well. Uh, I've invested in a limit as a limited partner um, in a multifamily uh, apartment apartment buildings in Texas. What advice would you give for newbies like myself and maybe others on the call? It is in you know, doing your due diligence and you know consistently learning. I think it is with every investing uh, investments as well, kind of like learning what the market is uh, is doing. And you know, watching and asking others, um, you know, about about the syndicator and the track record behind. I think that is an important part. I feel um, I feel education is a big part. Listening to a couple of other pitches and deals, so understanding what are what questions others are asking, and then always be prepared to really ask good questions, right? Only who ask will learn and will be also remembered. So I think that is another is another big part. Also, if you work with with um, you know in the world in anyhow, always you know think about great, great questions. Um, I think evaluating different syndicators and also look at the track record and then compare it, you know, to the market. So what are typical returns? what is more important and then also evaluating yourself what is your risk factor what is important to you uh you know uh, value add always has the opportunity of the tax write offs against other passive income right that's fantastic you know to get that in addition um that combined with a single family home can be perfect, right? So I, I have this tried off, sold another single family. So, you know, it's again, it's a strategy you can run and, and knowing that, but I think it's also important, what is your risk factor? What is most important to you? Is cash flow very important to you or the highest return? So that also defines then where 
you might want to invest, Margie. So I think that's, you know, question to ask about yourself, your risk factor, what you're looking for, what your goal is uh, out of this investment. And um, yeah, and, and doing your due diligence. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. You know, you also want to consider, you know, and, and Barbara's alluded to this, but what is your buy box? Like, what are those you know, goal posts, if you will? And, and I have a document I can share with you, Margie, and anybody here who's interested on buy box. <clears throat> you know, it, it doesn't mean like if it's a, it's a touch out of the buy box, you won't get involved. But, you know, you really want to know. Are you looking for a class A, which is, you know, the best, or class C, which is a value add, as Barbara said, and, <clears throat> you know, just figure out the locations, because location is kind of key, um, you know, living where you live. I'm sure you know neighborhoods that are good and neighborhoods that are not good, you know, which mm -hmm. ones are up and coming, which ones are not up and coming, so, and you know, feeling comfortable talking to brokers about the, that area and, and just, you know, going out to look. I, I think it was Grant Cardone who said, just go look at 100 properties and walk them. And yeah. Felix uh, can tell us as well because he's, he's done that. Felix, you want to chime in? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Uh, you know, like Barbara said, the most important part is definitely due diligence. You know, without that, you, you know, you're just going to be lost, you know, make sure, you know, you are able to work with your team. You know, it, it most, you know, really another important part of it is, is your team, because, you know, everybody's got to do their part. And Barbara also mentioned before, you know, capital raising. You know, I've spoken to a few teams where guys were like, nope, I'm only asset manager. Nope, I'm only doing it. No, it's not, it's not the way it works. It's, you know, if you're going to be on a team, if you're going to be part of this project and you want me to be part of it, this is how I would like to see it run. Everybody does capital raising because this is all, this is our deal. It's not just my deal. You know, it's not just the person doing a capital, it's everybody's deal. So everybody needs to be doing capital raising. Everybody needs to be out there networking. Everybody on the team needs to be out there talking to people, trying to get them to come in and get on, you know, get on a deal. Everybody should be doing part of the due diligence. Everybody should be learning part of it and doing everything that's being involved in. You know, if you have to go and, and you know, inspection, everybody should be part of the inspection. If, you know, you got to talk to an insurance company, you should be on your phone calling insurance companies because it's a yeah. lot of work. You know, definitely a lot of work. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, man, I got to go out and look at 50 units. No, you do what's comfortable for you. If looking at four units, a quadplex is, is comfortable for you, then go look at the four units. Get that, especially now, since you only have to put 5% on investment. It used to be 25%. You know, not a lot of people got 25% to go buy four family house. But, you know, now four, five, six family house, you can put 5% down. It's great. Who? Why wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> you know, I mean, especially now. It's, you know, everybody's like, ah, oh, the interest rates. Forget about the interest rates. That's not. That's not the important thing. Get the house. Interest rates are going to go down. You refinance later on. You know, I'm going to wait till the interest rates go down. Why would you want to do that? If the interest rates go down, what do you think is going to happen? The prices are going to go up. So why mm -hmm. wait? Get go get it. Go get it done now. Uh, you know, talk to as many people as you can. Network. Network is the most important thing. Get yourself out there. Get yourself known. Let people know what you're doing. You know, start with your friends. Start with your family. You know, start that way and just expand from there. You know, there's plenty of people on these calls that go to network events. How do you think I met Barbara? My first uh, convention I went to, Barbara was one of the first people I met there. You know, and I oh, watch awesome. her grow as she did. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You know, this was what, about two and a half years ago, Barbara? Yes, yes absolutely. You know, and absolutely. since then, I had zero, zero multifamily properties, right? Now I have 400 units that I'm invested in as LP, GP, and KP. You know, I was able to sign on the last one. I was able to sign on the loan and become a KP on it. Wow. So that was a big, big step for me. You know, and I would never have done it, you know, not, not networking with these people, not building the confidence. You know, it's... It, Talking to these people are going to build your confidence. 
and let you move forward and get you get you in the right place, that right mindset, right place where you want to be. You know, I love to work out. You know, I that helps me feel better. That gets me going through the day. I work out. It gives me my energy. It gives me the confidence to do other things. You know, it's, you know, you got to get yourself disciplined. You know, is the other thing, you know, and start small. You know, you want to get yourself disciplined, start very small. And this is what I tell everybody. You know what you start with? Start with your bed. You know, make, <laughs> make your, your bed, bed every morning. <laughs> get yourself disciplined. Make your bed every morning. Yeah. You know what? Because if you don't do it, anything else the rest of the day, when you go to your bedroom at night and you look at your bed, what's the one thing you're going to see? That you accomplished something because you made your bed that morning. And then it just grows from there. You know, it starts small, take baby steps and just keep going and going and going. You know, yeah. uh, another thing is I always think positive. You know, not many people know this, but I'm in a wheel. I'm in a wheelchair. I was in a bad accident. You know, but listen, you see me, I'm going to be the first person that always has a smile on the face. Yeah, right? always. <laughs> always. I always. I'm, I'm always smiling. I'm a positive person. You know, when you go to bed at night, don't sit there and think, Oh God, did I do this? Oh God, did I do that? Oh man, I need to get this done. I'm so pissed off. But the when you go to bed at night, think about everything you have. Everything about how great your life is. You know, I have this. I have a family. My kids. My you know, my brothers, my sisters. You know, I did this today. I did that today. Think positive, and I guarantee you, you get a better night's sleep. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. mindset, right? We're talking about mind. Yeah, mindset's everything. Mindset. mindset is everything. Once you, you know, like I said, it's. I start with my health, and I go from there, you know. And I meditate. I talk to people. I read, you know. I listen to different things, and you know, it, and it just it keeps growing and growing and growing, you know. Are there okay. days you're going to go backwards? Sure, absolutely. But then again, you sit there and you think positive thoughts. All right, well, I'm having a bad day today, but, you know, I have all these things. I have all these people in my life. You know, I have this person I can always call and boom, I'm right back to where I need to be. You know, and you go from there. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Barbara specifically? Well, like so now you only had in Atlanta, Georgia, or you guys, how far out do you guys go? Well, mainly, you know, Georgia and I would say the surroundings. I have invested in uh, in Texas. And as I said, I'm a, I'm collaborating with uh, with a couple of syndications. And, you know, they also determine uh, what they're doing. Some of them are also fund infused, right? So a certain amount of money has, you know, is secured, which, you know, is nice to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, so in, in, in others not. So it really depends yeah. on the on the type of deal. Uh, on the type of deal as well. Me personally, I like Georgia because nice. I know it, right? It's my, it's my, it's my backyard, and specifically Atlanta and the surroundings of Atlanta. Other awesome. areas I have to research, but I also look at, you know, at at uh, the Charlotte right now. There's one deal I'm looking at, so uh, this does not only have to be. But I, I said I want to be able to be there in one or two hours, either. Right. In, you know, one or two hours ideal, either with the airplane, you know, quick flight. I don't want to sit six hours somewhere on it. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, because I'm still constantly looking at properties and, you know, hopefully, you know, we can get something together. Yeah, so, but, you know, and again, the part is, this is sometimes how it works, right? You meet, yep. you connect, you see the growth, you follow what people are doing yeah. and uh, opportunity, you know, opportunities can happen. So it's yes. like, you know, it's, it, that is the exciting part of, uh, of it. I think it's, you know, we have to send it out to the universe. If yeah. you want to be comfortable, then nothing will happen, right? If we're doing the same thing we always have done, yeah. nothing really will yeah. happen. There's the energy is not there too. But if you're pushing it out, you know, at a certain point, it's like, it's like vibration starting. And at yeah. this point, it's, things are coming, things are happening. Yeah. You know, it just occurred to me, um, I guess being in the staging business has helped you really understand the Atlanta market. Yeah, oh, yeah, we will, you know, we touch, um, we touch six, seven areas every day, right? So, you know, and again, mainly the um the, the area where 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 you have the higher end homes right but so you mm -hmm. also know what is happening and the other part is since we're working with a lot of the home builders 
where are new developments, right? Where are people, what price point, what is happening, what is in the pipeline? So yes, absolutely, that helps a lot. And I know so many, I know all of the top 20, the top 20 uh, percent of real estate agent, right? The ones who are really performing at the highest. I know the top producers and uh, I can call them up and ask them questions, right? All of that is a good network to have. And now I'm expanding that with the government in, um, you know, connecting with, uh, you know, with Fulton, with, you know, with COP, knowing who makes this decision, knowing who is the commissioner. All of that is important because this is, a helping um you know it's it's you can tap into your network that's what right. it is your network is your net worth right so yeah that's awesome so margie did we overwhelm you with our answers <laughs> no it was good uh, i had to explore right now <laughs> no, and one thing I wanted to ask um, Felix, because I've heard this too. Um, so, is it just fourplexes? Because I always had a dream. You know, you guys are, you know, you're like, you know, Ocean City, Maryland. I used to own a property there. And right across the street, I would see this little fourplex. And I'm like, one day I'm going to have a fourplex. And so, <laughs> something changed with the law that you're saying now you can just put down 5% or something? Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. banks changed. The, the banks have changed it to make it easier for somebody to get multi, you know, more properties. So, they just changed it, uh, you know, not too long ago. It was about maybe five months ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, jump on the opportunity and get it done. 5% to get a fourplex, absolutely. And you don't have to be a first time home buyer. You know, it doesn't have to be a, your primary res, primary residence. So yeah, definitely jump on it. I mean, I'm, it just I'm, I'm out there looking for everything right now. <laughs> is it like a, just a duplex or is it specifically a four? It's a, you know, single family home, duplex, okay. quadplex, five family, six family, you know, you know, I think it's up to what, uh, I gotta no, find out what up exactly. To four, up to four. I think it was up, up to four, four right? Four. Up, up to, to four yeah. family, right? Yeah, it's up to four family. Five is anything past that is 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 an, yeah. considered mm -hmm. commercial. Yeah, you yeah. have to live in one of the units. To, no, is it, okay. no, it's an, um, as an investment property. You only have to put five percent. If you're gonna live in the unit, then you you know if you're gonna live in the property, then you can just get a conventional FHA loan, and it'll be three and a half percent. You have to put down minimum. Yeah, I thought there was a one year. You have to live there for a year. You live there for a year, six months. They really don't check. Yeah, they don't. Check. But I mean, I've been told now, you know, mortgage companies that they're kind of checking. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. So he goes, just you know, so you look well, to look out. So. Anyway, just just look it up, Margaret. I could live, at the, I could live at the beach Google. for a year. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um. How about Joan? Hi, Joan. Nice to meet you. Uh, any questions Hi. you have for Barbara? I am really new to all of this. I am a residential realtor, and this is all to me. And Margie and I were talking, and she invited me, and um, I, I joined late, so I'm I'm really I'm sorry. No, I'm still just learning. Yeah, there's so much to learn, but that's why we're here. We're, you know, we have a community. You can look at our replays. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, Peter. Joan is being a little humble, too. Joan is a pretty well-known broker here in Hilton Head. She has her own real estate business. She's got 20 plus people working for her. She's being very humble and she's done a very well in residential re real estate investing. So she's like, me, I mean, like, well, like in the multifamily is new, but she's not new to real estate. Okay. There you go. No, you got John. John's your friend. She can find you all the properties. There you go. Yeah. Joe, we Mar need to talk. We need to talk. Right. So, so you can find you all the properties. She gets to make flex. money and you both smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, the, 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 the market's a bit more challenging here now. But um, I'm looking now in New Jersey for uh, fix and flips. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Felix okay. is a real well, uh, husband. You, you, is you a got me and you got Ken here. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can work together. <laughs> yeah, my number's right there. Take it down. Send me a message. Let me know what you're looking for, and I'll be more than happy. I cover, uh, you know, most of New Jersey. So, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. 
we love Hilton Head. We'll kind of like visit, you know, we'll go, yeah. I, I visit, I like that for like the little beach vacation. I have some friends in Hilton Head too, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm originally from New Jersey and, and relocated down here 20 years ago. And um, we bought a place near the Jersey shore with our daughter. That's, that's where they live. Nice. What part? Uh, Manasquan yeah, near nice. Point Pleasant. Nice was yeah. that after Sandy? <laughs> I hope. Yeah, they're they're not um, that close to the beach. They're they're oh, fifteen who, minutes away. Okay, that was Hurricane Sandy I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we just have a few minutes left, so Barb, why don't you uh, wrap us up and you know? No, Pat is like excited. You know, again, thank you for the opportunity. I think you know to to close it out is whatever you want. And whatever you are really driving, you know, you invest in education, uh, you know, get out, go it, and mindset is everything. My one, I, I create every year a vision board. I'm a strong believer that this is really helpful to have a visualization of where you want to go. And one of these big parts is think big. So really big. So what I have on this is really think big and whatever I do, I evaluate it against that. Is this big enough? Am I thinking big enough? The interesting part is stretching. I like, uh, you know, I like that, you know, synergy, you know, part is like, if you think about a rubber band, right? A rubber band only does its job when it's stretched. That means there has to be, you know, there has to be something which is pushing you a little bit forward all the time. So I feel strongly, you know, continuous, uh, you know, my life is always stretching a little bit more, something, you know, a little bit pushing a little bit more in the mind, in the way we're thinking and fantastic things can happen, but we have to get out of comfort. And, uh, and honestly, success is boring. The way to success is very boring because it requires consistency of doing the, you know, the key things every day and not deferring from it, right? The things, you know, the key things. We can be busy all day long, but it is doing the key things, you know, in real estate, it is the communication, picking up the phone, uh, you know, in capital raising, it is the connection, uh, and picking up the phone, having these conversations, getting out. And uh, if you want to stretch, right, you have to get into rooms where you're the smallest fish, where nobody knows you, where you are like a humble learner. And then ask great questions. The people will remember the people you will spend out if you can ask great questions. So don't only go somewhere, learn about it, prepare for it and make the best out of it, right? Best question, whom should I, you know, know? If I don't know anybody, then, you know, find the person who seems to be the, knows everybody, like organizing, you know, takes things, talks to everybody, you know, somehow involved, they will know and then ask, you know, whom should I, whom should I get connected with? Whom should I talk to? Who can share more? So um, as a starting point, helps me. Um, and um, yeah, ask question and being a good listener. So that's part, it's different when I'm talking on a podcast, but <laughs> the power of listening and um, asking good questions is, is a big one for me. I hope I asked you some good questions. <laughs> yes, yes. And I oh, hope good. everybody got at least one or two um, value nuggets out of the conversation today. I think that's the key part. Oh, yeah. It is all about sharing too. Uh, hopefully there's something you can put into action, right? Otherwise it is not, um, you know, if, if we're not putting the time we're investing into an action element afterwards, then I feel it has not, then we might not have done the job, right? So it should result in some action. If that means, okay, I want to listen to one or two more podcasts. Uh, if it is, I have to read a good book. Um, you know, uh, what what is it? You know, what what is the next book you're 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 reading? Uh, Donna, you have a good book recommendation? 
Oh, well, of course, real women in real estate is number one. <laughs> Volumes <laughs> yes. one and two. Now Margie's in volume two as well. So that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, the hard is, you know, it's understanding lingo, right? You know, business yeah. lingo, like every, um, you know, so that you can focus on uh, the nuggets shared. Sometimes if we don't understand the verbiage used, then this is derailing us from the learning experience. So that is a good one. Uh, to learn about syndication and multifamily, I know John Fearless, I think the best apartment book ever is a great read, right? Just to get a high level overview of all of the elements, not for everybody, not from a pure investing perspective, but everybody who's interested, I think that's a good one too. There are more out there, but that's a good Can one. Can you repeat that, Barbara? It's John Fearless. It's the best ever and Donna, you have it too. Maybe you can put it also in the chat. Let me just quickly, I think I have it on my yeah, uh, Audible right here as well. Fairless. I can see quickly. Yeah. Um, what I am putting in the chat first. Best ever apartment syndication book. Yeah, okay. best ever apartment syndication book. Show fearless, like fair and less. Sorry. Okay. I'll put it in the chat, just one second. Sorry, I, yeah, my audible now went on. <laughs> <laughs> was talking to me, was talking to me. So I read and listen. Um, I, you know, listen to at least one book a week, one, one book a week. So I, you know, when I'm driving in the car, there's always something going on. I, I'm, sure. I am, I'm, I, you know, suction. I'm, I like to learn. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sponge. <laughs> She's a road scholar, R O A D. <laughs> like this. Yeah, fantastic well thank you so much and again uh donna ken i appreciate it thank you for hosting me margie joan uh felix uh who else peter. is here peter um yeah, yeah. i appreciate it but... yeah well thank you and i, I you. do want to say that um in, a, in about a, less than a week's time the replay will be on our YouTube channel, which is at Hookup with Real Estate, and I'll send Barbara a copy and I'll send out the, the replay. Joan, I do not have your email. If you don't mind just putting it in the chat, then I can keep you connected. Yeah, for um, and see. I'll just there's, stop oh, the, the recording okay. right now. Um, but thank you so much, Barbara. This was such a pleasure. I really enjoyed.